And here we go. We got ourselves another fresh series from the Masters Coliseum 6. Spawning down in the bottom right for Onside Gaming. It is Maru. In the red. And his opponent. Spawning up in the top left for Mystery Gaming. It is Ragnarok. In the blue. And he has gone for an ext No, he's gone for a gas pool. Okay. Gas pool... Yeah, all right. Uh, Maru is going for his trademark. Not trademark. He's not the one who trademarked it. But he does it a lot. Two Racks Reaper. Not going to be going for the three Racks Reaper play here. It is an option. Always an option. It's not a requirement. Certainly not. Now, we have got to talk about historical matchups. Maru versus Ragnarok. They have played 25 series against one another. Maru has won 24 of them. The one that he lost was a 1-0 loss. That is it. Ragnarok, by the way, is going to be taking two hatcheries behind this. But the Lings, the fast Ling speed is most certainly going to be trying to... Uh, surprise the Reapers on the map. Absolutely going to be trying to catch these units out. Now, Maru, he is nobody's fool, but he is going for a third barracks. Is this going to be the four racks? I think so. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. It is the three Reaper opening to start. Of course, these Reapers are just going to try and find some value. They got to get off the map, though, very shortly. I would say... I would say they should probably start moving away, like, now. Because lane speed is going to complete very shortly. Ooh, the lanes trying to get the wraparound. So the juke from Maru is not good. He gets caught. Slow lanes get the execution. Oh, and now he might just lose all three Reapers. Very nicely done by Ragnarok. He is going to have a hatchery finishing up shortly, so he will not get supply blocked. Maru going to try and drop the grenade. Oh, the two links from the back. Oh, the hold position. Yo, Ragnarok. That was so sick. Oh, that was so, 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 so smart. Let's go, Raggy. Oh, my God. One link here. One link here. One excited caster, man. That was such a sick play. Oh, and he knew the grenade was used, so they couldn't get knocked out of the way. Oh my god, that was so sick. Oh. God damn, that was cool. I know it's just one Reaper, but those kind of plays are just pimp as hell. One Ling for three Reapers. A ton of map control now in the favor of Ragnarok. Now, he did get a little bit supply blocked at 36. So, he did slow down his droning a tiny bit. And there is going to be a four racks behind this. Will Maru... Maru's behind. Maru's not in a comfy position. Oh, but Ragnarok getting supply blocked at 66. Oh, this is a this is a rough block. Oh, he's still not building Overlord. He's st he's still not building Overlord. Ay 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 ay. The Overlord is so late. No. And Maru's going to start to move out. Ragnarok fortunately for him, he's at a pretty ideal worker count. To deal with a push like this so he just wants to build links so all this does is get him larva capped but it blocked maybe some potential more queen production and it means that the links don't pop out right away 26 of them on the production tab here maru is he going to commit no he shouldn't he's building a third command center two engineering bays in fact he's already gone far enough Okay, he is going to back away. I like this very much. He sees the links. Shows just one Marine. Oh, this is cute. He's <laughs> going to tuck it in the corner. He's going to leave this as kind of a scouting beacon. Ragnarok does spot the army going home. Good decision making from Maru here. Very much good decision making. 59 links forced out. Oh, but also a big stim. I think Ragnarok, I think he should just build a bunch of Banelings and just go. 
I don't think you should hesitate. The thing is, you're expecting maybe a two base all in behind this is Ragnarok. You can't know that Maru is playing quite greedy now. Oh, Maru, no, 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 don't do the beyond thing. Oh, he's forgotten plus one attack. Ah, that hurts my soul in a way that I really just can't describe. It is, that hurts, that hurts so much. I hate it when players forget upgrades. Oh, it's the worst unforced error that a player can make is just forgetting to make upgrades. Uh, Ragnarok, for his part, he does not. He starts up that 1-1. One, one. Bane speed. He's got the money. He just finished up layer. Let's see how long it takes him to start that up. Oh, he's going to go for a big jump on this army. Ah, but that wasn't... I don't know if that was ever going to work out in this scenario. I like that Maru only stimmed this uh, chunk of Marines. Now the medevacs pop out. How many units just went down? 11 lings and no marines. Very good for Maru. Ragnarok did start up the Bane Speed right away. Still no plus one attack. Oh, Maru. This would have been such a strong timing. To quote myself, we want bigger guns, not thicker suits. If you're going to remember or forget one upgrade as the Terran, you always want to remember attack. Now, I mean, if you you just don't want to make the mistake. Maru also forgot his armory, and he's still not getting attacked, so he didn't even check for it. Aye, aye, aye. And this is brutal because he's going for an eight racks. Oh. The, <sighs> Maru could already have two, two on the way. Instead, he doesn't even have plus one attack started yet. Meanwhile, Ragnarok, he is going to have a lot of creep getting cleared up in the middle, but... He will be able to get in on top of these units. Ooh, Bainley's getting a couple of good connections. Marine's going to try and snipe creep. Oh, but he sticks around too long. Eats a couple of Bainleys to the face. Now, that was... I would say that was pretty good for Ragnarok. Uh, I do like that Maru was targeting the creep, but it only works if you get all the tumors. And he does get a lot of them. Good scan on the bottom side. Going to clear out a lot of creep here. Maru needs to be stutter stepping. Okay, there we go. He will get yeah, he'll get all the tumors. He's fine. There's that one two on the way, by the way. Oh man, it, this is really unfortunate for Maru here. Ooh. Oh, trying to target down Banes, but Ragnarok pulled them back. Good job. There's the one two. Groove Spines is on the way. Hydra speed is already finished. Bane speed is done. Two two on the way for Ragnarok. Oh, was that a Baneling run by attempt? It looks like. Ling Bane, maybe? Ragnarok has been able to respread creep. This will still be a very scary push. Even, like I'm talking about the upgrades. The tanks can be huge here. The tanks can be everything. We've got no hive, which means no uh, vipers. Maru getting set up very far back with these siege tanks. Oh, that was, a, that was an F2 stim if ever I've seen one. How many medevacs do we have? We got... Oh, we got eight medevacs. We're still kind of fine. And it's not like there's any marauders in here. 75, now 81 marines. Ragnarok, he should just give up this base. He's going to try and counterattack with a bunch of Lingbane Hydra. Third, fourth command center is on the way for Maru. Will it get denied? Oh, it's going to complete, but it probably will go down. Yes, it will. And this is going to force the entire army back home. A lot of reinforcements getting taken out. Lingbane and the Natural finding a ton of SCVs. Maru coming back home and losing so many workers to this. And the Hydras, they just get out of here. Oh, that is so good for Ragnarok. Ragnarok's up. Ragnarok is up 51 workers right now. That was absolutely best case scenario here for Ragnarok. He's going to go for another big counter punch. Ooh, Banelings. You got to be careful. There's a lot of tanks here. Maru still has a ton of stuff. Ooh, Scan looking for some units in the middle of the map. 2-2 Two -two is about to complete for Raggy. It is going to be an upgrade lead for Ragnarok when that completes. But this is a deep tank line and a lot of Marines. Ragnarok going to try and pull the trigger here. Top side flank is a little bit disjointed, but he's going to try and wrap around on the Marines. The Banelings looking for the connections, getting them very effectively. All the army of Maru getting crushed beneath the mighty boot of the swarm. 
Ragnarok takes game one in magnificent fashion. All right, here we go. Game number two. Spawning down in the bottom right with a fantastic game number one for Mystery Gaming. It is Ragnarok. In the blue. And his opponent spawning up the top left for onside gaming. It is Maru. In the red. And he is going for a proxy three racks. This... This is a... Well, this is a pretty dedicated attack. Ling speed. Ling speed first would have been magnificent in this game. Now, obviously, Ragnarok had a great start there. He picked off the first two Reapers very early and then caught the third one with a pimp play with the Ling hold position. Honestly, such a pimp play with that in game number one. Oh, and it's going to be gasless. But if this is gasless, hatch, pool, hatch. Ah, uh, this is not ideal. Now, if this is the hatch pool hatch that Dark loves doing on this map, the gasless play, Dark has a tendency to when he sends the third drone out to check the watchtower, but he would have sent that drone out by now if he was going for this. Ooh, Ragnarok will see these SCVs coming. Does he cancel the gas? No, he's going to pull drones. He doesn't know yet if this is a two racks or a three racks. Overlord is actually going to distract this Marine for a little while. And that will mean the Marine doesn't get as far forward as it would like to. Ooh, Ragnarok losing uh, losing track of things a little bit here. Does lose one, two drones right away. SCV is kind of body blocking effectively. One Marine will fall. Oh, nice wraparound there from Ragnarok. Gets a, gets a second Marine, but he's losing a lot of drones. Now he will find two of the SCVs, but seven drones is so much damage. Now, with the spine crawler being placed where it is. Oh, double inject. Okay, this being gasless makes this a lot better for Ragnarok, but Maru recognizes correctly that he has done a lot of damage here. Seeing the command center, though, is actually. This is really good for Ragnarok. Ragnarok took a risk with the double inject. Oh, man, and he's sending out SCVs. Oh, this is. This is actually, or sorry, not sending out SCVs, sending out links. This is very good for Ragnarok here. He's going to get the cancel on the command center. This should have been such a good situation for Maru. But Ragnarok recognizing correctly that Maru has been too greedy here. This is going to be a canceled command center. Oh my goodness. This has gone from so good to so bad for Maru in the blink of an eye. And you might be saying, oh, why didn't he go into the main? No, canceling the command center is better. Oh, this is so bad for Maru. Ragnarok took a gamble, it paid off, and then he took another gamble and it double paid off. And I think these Marines are gonna go down as well. Yes, they are. The stutter step is not gonna be enough. Three Marines just won't beat seven Lings in a fair fight. Oh my God, Ragnarok took so much damage, but is now so far ahead. Ay, 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 ay. That is so painful for Maru. He is going to take three CCs behind this, but having the command center at the natural canceled like that. Really, really rough. And then even that bunker that was just trying to contain got spotted and canceled and even reinforced that Ragnarok was making the right decision because he's like, oh, clearly you're just trying to contain me. I can go across the map with these links. Oh my God, this is, this is a massive advantage right now for Ragnarok when it should have been almost, like it's entirely possible that an SCV pull would have won the game if Maru had continued building Marines. Also, if it had just been standard macro play from here and Ragnarok doesn't get that cancel on the command center or doesn't double inject either of those things, I think it's still an advantage for Maru. Now, it is a significant advantage for Ragnarok. Maru gets caught being greedy. It's, it's far from over. If there's any player that can play from behind and make magic happen, especially against a player like Ragnarok, who Maru has had his number historically, it is Maru. 
But this is a really rough situation for the Terran player right now. Uh, now, Stim is going to finish up very quickly. He's going for a single Engineering Bay, but funnily enough, Ragnarok's also going for a single Evo. I think this is going to be Fast Carapace, yeah. Yeah, Ragnarok is, like, look at the worker count. 31 uh, SEVs to 49 drones already. Now, Maru, is this, is this like a, it's not a fake third command center, but it's, it's kind of a two and a half base push behind this. No tank production yet. He just now starts the tech lab. So it is going to be a relatively decent sized commitment to the Marines. Ragnarok never got link speed. He's just thinking about these roaches. Overseer does get the scout. Doesn't funnily enough see the third command center. So he actually might misread this as a two base all in, which would, in a weird way, kind of be really good for Ragnarok. Because if he just builds pure units from this position and then sees the third command center landing and goes with plus one carapace and roach speed, I don't think Maru can deal with it because the tank production is so late, because he's so far behind from the early stages. And Ragnarok has some pretty solid creep spread on the left side as well. Right side, not too shabby either. And he did spot this drop coming on in. Maru is going to step into the army. Ah, there's a few too many Marines here. Ragnarok didn't bring enough to fight this. And Maru, that was honestly a great trade. That was five Marines for six Roaches, a Queen, and a Ling. Obviously, the Ling was the one on the Watchtower. Uh, Ragnarok misjudging that a little bit. He needed like two, maybe three more Roaches diverting off of the main army. Now, though, Maru gets to make this game weird. Ragnarok, I don't think he should be going just yet. There's no reason to attack the natural. By the way, the third command center is it's kind of hidden. I think Maru might have correctly realized that Ragnarok thinks this was, in fact, a two-base all-in and didn't scout the third CC. Oh, the flank drop from Maru. Gonna come in. Already one Ravager getting sniped. Second and third will go down. Maru getting some really good pickoffs here. Ooh, but he needs to save this army. However, uh, no, never mind. He fights with the high ground advantage. Ragnarok really getting driven back. A couple of misjudgments from Ragnarok with where he should have fought. And now it is, it is Maru who has kind of reasserted himself a little bit in this game. <laughs> this is funny. This is a very funny setup. I actually think this is so smart with the base being put on the left side here. I think this is really intelligent. Uh, from Maru, that is. Ragnarok, he's still in an okay position. But he doesn't know about this base. He's lost a lot of his advantage. Queen goes down. Creep Tumor getting sniped down as well. Ragnarok. Oh, man. He, he was in a position to really make some stuff happen. I wonder if he didn't realize how much the third command or the uh, command center pickoff kind of like pulled him back in the lead of this game. It is hard to get a read. Like you lose a lot of drones early on and you can sometimes think that things are worse off than they are. Or maybe he even thought he was better off than he was. Maybe he didn't realize he lost so many drones. So he's like, oh, okay, I can just attack in with these roaches and you won't have enough to defend. Oh, oh, Maru, please kill it. He's focused on the other side where he is getting a lot of damage done to this hatchery. Won't be able to take it off. Take it down. Oh, please. Oh, kill. Hello? Maru, Maru, Maru. Okay. I mean, it gets the active tumor. That's the most important thing, but we do want to be like he did it in two scans what he could have done in one, and then didn't even get any value from the second scan. So I don't want to be too nitpicky, but he could be playing a little bit better. He's maybe a little bit off, or maybe he's thrown off by how well Maru or uh, Ragnarok played game one. Maru, by the way, up at 77 SCVs right now. I, I just don't think Ragnarok's got a good read on this game now. Oh, he sees the gas now, but... God, the diva. <laughs> terrible, terrible damage. 
Maru doing a really good job of clipping back all the creep. And Ragnarok not respreading it here. We do see the transition from Ragnarok into plus one melee, plus two carapace, and he's getting into the bane speed. I think on a Hydra Den as well. His hive did just complete. Maru, he's he's been successful at keeping Ragnarok pinned back for the last little bit. Uh, Liberator does come into the natural then. Not particularly successful, only gets two drones, does go down. But Maru survived a really disadvantageous early game. This was a... He, he was in a bad position. Make no mistake. Ragnarok... It is, this is not a timing for him. Even if he hits with Bane Speed, plus two Carapace, and plus one Melee, I don't think there's a whole lot he can do. Maru building the fifth Command Center on location. Not sure what these Marines were doing without a medevac. Oh, but he baits the Roaches in to some tank fire. Maru on the other side of the map will get out with the medevacs. Good clean pickup. Concussive shells not yet started, but we'll see See if he gets that pretty soon. He is just starting to add Marauders, so it's kind of reasonable that he hasn't added the shells yet. Bigger things to deal with, of course, are the 3-3 three, three upgrades for Maru, and of course the plus two vehicle weapons when it becomes available. Uh, mostly these skirmishes have been over the watchtowers and over vision, but Maru in general has just been getting good trays. He's been doing a really good job here. Uh, he is transitioning into the ghosts. Neo Humanity, obviously a fantastic map for turtling overall. Maru does get the scout, will scan the Vipers and the Hive. And with that in mind, oh, he's rotating over to deal with this army on the left side. Sensor towers in the middle of the map for Maru give, well, they give almost total vision. And I like how far forward he's put them. It's going to be really difficult to snipe those sensor towers for the Zerg without committing kind of hard. Oh, Vipers not able to get their spells just yet, but there we go. Do good grab some bright blinding clouds. They're pretty good. Actually, good of ducks as well. Siege tanks mostly getting taken care of. This is actually a pretty big hammer blow from Ragnarok. But Maru's got enough to hold on. Ah, does he? Siege tank on the high ground will get taken down. The sensor tower that I was alluding to. I mean, is this a big enough commitment for you? I would say certainly yes. That was a lot of tanks that got picked off. That was, that was a great attack from Ragnarok. Five tanks, four, sorry, six tanks. Seven tanks, four ghosts. Now, Ragnarok threw away a lot to do that. But that went really, really well for Ragnarok, actually. I was saying Maru holds, but, like, it did cost him a lot of high-value units. He does still have six tanks. Six ghosts as well. Oh, Sensor Tower getting blocked by his own siege tank here. Uh, and now we get to see another reason why Zergs don't like this map, Neo Humanity, uh, is the siege tank potential from the middle of the map. Uh, very small amount of bio with this. Mostly this is the ghosts in siege tanks. Bio just kind of poking forward. Ragnarok, oh, he's going to try and go in. Does get a couple of good blinding clouds. EMPs do come in on the Vipers eventually, and they are pretty good at the tail end. Banelings trying to connect on the Ghost, but the Ghost will cloak up and will be spread very nicely. But once again, the tanks all getting taken down. Only two tanks left on the field. This is starting to look really good for Ragnarok. Even though he kind of missed some opportunities in the early game. Maru. I mean... I don't know if getting aggressive there was the right move after he lost so many tanks. And it would turn out that it was not. Plus three armor does start up, but it starts up as the plus three attack for Maru just finished. Ragnarok is on plus three Carapace. He needs to start up his plus three melee. Oh, he's already started up the plus two missile. But at the same time, he's building, like, spending all of his money on uh, Banelings. Overlord speed going to complete as well. That'll make his Overseers faster. Vipers have recharged. How many have gone down in this game? Three Vipers, but they've been rebuilt very effectively. Hellbats do not have plus three. In fact, they don't even have plus two vehicle weapons yet. Nor do they have blue... No, they do have blue flame. Okay. So they're still pretty good against things, but they don't one-shot them. Uh, there's no defenses on the left side. 
Ooh, Ragnarok gonna try and get in here. Ghost all clumped up. We will see the EMPs missing, getting dodged by Ragnarok. Ragnarok getting some huge blinding clouds. The Ghost getting, oh, chased back, but they will survive for the moment. Tanks once again. Tank count getting reset. And the sensor tower burns down as well. Ragnarok is really playing well today. But as Maru holds, he will be able to counterattack. He should just kill this base and just back away, I think. Oh, has he actually stayed too far? He might have. Ghosts going down. Tanks going down. Maru being pushed back and kind of getting crushed there a little bit. So many tanks have died in this game. 19 siege tanks. It is still close. I don't want to pretend like, Reg or, uh, like Maru is not playing well. Maru is playing well. But Ragnarok usually gets dominated by Maru. Ooh, now this nuke, if it lands, it will kill the base. Ragnarok, oh, pull, pull the drones. Okay, there we go. Good job from Maru, I like that. He should chill, he should chill a little bit. He should chill a little bit back away. He's already achieved his objective. Oh, there's a huge EMP. Ragnarok gonna try and go with the fight regardless. He did get one blinding cloud. There are still a couple of tanks behind this. Ghost being forced to lift up into the medevacs. Ah, uh, I don't know. Planetary Fortress is going to hold, but Ragnarok might try and break it. Oh, he gets it on top of the SCV line. Won't have enough to kill the base. And the Orbital Command that was burning did get repaired as well. Only nine SCVs falling. Ragnarok overextending a little too much on the counterattack. He thought he had an opportunity, but he allowed Maru to fight the way he wanted to. Nice snipes, by the way, on those Hydras. Good job from Maru there. And now the supplies have evened out. And I think Ragnarok has lost his initiative. Meanwhile, behind this, Maru is on six bases. Ragnarok, if he could have recognized that there's been no defense on this base for the entire game, he could have been such a nuisance. Even just while he was doing the big attacks, 12 lings to this base. Look, there's no defense on this base either. Oh my goodness. Ragnarok, if he loses this game, he is going to be so sad. That is a lot of Bane Hydra being committed here. Mostly Banes. But that is a lot of units. Ragnarok. Oh, we'll be able to swamp the rest of the army. He does lose a base. Ooh, Snipes one, Medivac second one. Does go down as well. It was the empty one that goes down. Is the first one that died that had a full payload. Ah, that's a base for a base. Is that... Oh, that is a... Yeah, that is, the, that is the command center, I think, that... No, that's not the command center of this five. That's just a lifted orbital. But not from the main base. He's on six orbitals still. Liberators being added on here. Ragnarok never got plus three melee. He's getting plus three missile. Never got the plus three melee. Plus three vehicle weapons is now done for Maru. And, oh, he's going to try... Oh, the EMPs land home again. And, oh, man, the EMPs have been on point for the last few fights from Maru. Ragnarok has a lot of stuff. And if the Baylings connect on the Ghost, the Ghosts are not splitting. There's the split. Beautiful splits from Maru. But now there's nothing to cover the Ghost. There's no Medivacs either. Ah, but I think it's still going to be a little bit too much for Ragnarok. Yes, it will. Maru holds the counter punch. The Ghost splits are immaculate. And he will even the series at one apiece. All right, here we go. Game number three. Spawning up at the top right for Mystery Gaming. It is... Ragnarok. In the blue. And his opponent. Spawning down on the bottom left for Onside Gaming. It is Maru. In the red. And Maru. Looks like he's going back to the two racks Reaper play. Oh, man. This series started off so well for Ragnarok. He got the brilliant start in game number one. Kind of a soft build order counter and then really exploited it well. Looks like Maru, by the way, will just be going one racks. So not going to be doing the two racks Reaper. Uh, game number two. Maru actually got himself in a really good position off of the initial setup with the Proxy 3 Racks. Proxy 3 Racks Marine. He got himself into... Yeah, he killed seven drones. Did lose two SCVs. But definitely put himself ahead. 
Ragnarok, however, took a risk, took a gamble, double injected behind the spine crawler. He then saw that Maru took a really fast expansion on the low ground with his overlord and took another gamble, sent the, all of his lings across the map to cancel it. He got the cancel. Maru got really far behind from that after he should have been ahead in theory. Maru tried to cut Marines, really got caught being greedy. And yeah, the rest is history, as they say. Now, as we get into game number three, uh, and I, I say the rest is history, that was the start. But Maru obviously came back, clawed his way back, got did pretty well with the drops and was enough to equalize, and then took advantage of Neo Humanity really well. Uh, but this could have very easily been a 2-0 start for Ragnarok in this series. Uh, Maru did go Reaper straight reactor with the low ground. And now into a fast third CC as well. Ragnarok not taking a... Uh, not taking a third base just yet. Going to be doing some kind of two base play. Reaper of Maru. At this point, you got to be a little bit worried. How much has Maru seen? Not a whole lot. Like, and by not a whole lot, I mean, like, really not a whole lot. Like, if there was a Roach Warren behind this, and just a big Roach Ling Flood, all of Maru's production is at the front. There is no bunker. This... This would be really difficult to deal with any kind of push. Now, I suppose he scouted in far enough to see that the Evo or the uh, spawning pool wasn't wiggling. I'm not actually... Yeah, I, I guess that's enough. I guess that's enough. But that could also still mean a roach push. And he didn't... He did get far enough in to see gas wasn't being mined here. I don't know. This is going to be two base muta behind this. Uh, two base muta versus a... 2-1... A 3cc 2-1-1. Now, there is a build that was invented... Invented? Is invented too strong a word? Kind of, yeah. Pioneered uh, to deal with this setup. And that was a, a kind of the 3cc Hellbat stimmed Marine push. Now, I wonder if Maru has recognized that this is a two-base Muta play. Because if he has, he might continue to build... Uh, Hellions. Okay, no, he's not. He's just building the reactor for this starport. So we'll just be that, uh, like I said, modified. Or well, 3CC211. Uh, Ragnarok. Is he going to do a, basically a Muta Bane all in? He's not adding on Evo Chambers. He got one, but it's looking like it's mostly as a wall. I, oh, I would have really loved to see Ragnarok. Oh, oh, a dive attempt does get denied. Would have loved to see Ragnarok go for fast, like... Plus one melee to just deny this. Scout will get denied in the main base, but he sees a ton of lings. Honestly, the lings are probably enough to let him know. Yeah, okay, it will be that Hellbat. Yep, there it is, there's the armory. So he sees the lings and that gives him the tip off that he was looking for. But with Ragnarok pumping units off 48 drones, will he be able to hold this and potentially even crush it? Maybe. The big thing is, how many mutas does he build? If he stops at 8 and pumps Banes, he should be in a position to do pretty well against this. Of course, Maru will be on 3 CCs, but you can see he's not adding on additional SCVs. He is committing to unit production. No add-ons either for these two additional barracks. This is a very funky little timing from Maru. Oh, and he actually killed us an Overlord. How many Overlords did he just kill? Just one, so Ragnarok was actually already supply blocked. Uh, Banely speed will get fired up. Scan comes out in the natural. He doesn't see any units. Oh, it's actually going to be a big jump on the army in the middle of the map. I was not expecting this at all. Ragnarok, what are... No, why? Why? I... Why did we... Why? Well, okay. Um... Okay. I think Ragnarok's just dead now. He needed to fight this defensively. He didn't realize that Maru was attacking him. Oi, 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 oi. Uh, yeah. 
Ragnarok, I think, is just going to get taken down. We are going to see the Hellbats crushing the Lings. And the Mutas, despite being transfused, well, ah, there might not be enough anti-air, actually. Oh, well, reinforcing Marines. Hmm. Oh, Hellbat drop into the natural. Really nice job from Maru. Going to grab some drone damage at a time that Ragnarok can't really afford it. Ragnarok does drive this back. There wasn't enough anti-air. Maru, though, can start SEV production once again. Oh, Widow Mines. Do get mitigated by Ragnarok. Good job for Maru to kind of set up around a corner. I feel like Ragnarok needed to run down that whole army to make this okay for him, and he didn't. He wasn't able to do so. Single Engineering Bay has started, well, it's upgrade production. Was that a Widow Mine? Yeah. Uh... Oh, man, if Ragnarok had just received the attack instead of jumping the army in the middle of the map. That's bad observing for me, by the way. That's that's completely on me. But, like, I was just like, there's no way Ragnarok's going to fight the army. It would be so foolish. And surely enough, it was. Nice uh, pick off of a marine. I mean, even a single marine against Maru. You know, if you get it for free, you take that. You take that and you run. Oh, but Widow Mines in the middle of the map. They're still there. They were never cleaned up. Also, this drone. Uh... <laughs> no, he, he just uh, he just ignored it. Oh my god, that's funny. Tell the other drones what you saw. There's a big army. It's coming our way, sir. We need to be getting home. Ah. Oh, kill no cancel. Well, that's. That's better than killing drones, that's for sure. Or a drone. Oof. Uh, Ragnarok trying to counterattack with the Mutas. Pick off reinforcements. Wasn't able to do so. Bunch of Banes getting can canceled and the plus one melee getting denied. Maru very far forward on creep. Ah, but he, he's fine to do this. Ooh, that was a friendly fire widow mine. That was a very big friendly fire widow mine. Killed a lot. Of, uh, I think that killed like yeah, three Marines and bruised up the medevac. Maru? Oh, those Widow Mines. Oof. Big shot. Yeah, there's eight Mines on the field. Uh, yeah, that Friendly Fire mi Widow Mine kind of lets Ragnarok stay alive. I mean, he does still have a lot of Mutas, but losing the plus one melee hurts a lot. The big thing for Maru is he's still only on single engineering bay. Just now fires up the plus two weapons. Widow Mine somehow doesn't get a shot. The Mutas are very late into the fight. But once again, there's not enough anti-air. And this time, oh, Widow Mine. Oh, it's a big shot on the Mutas. But mm, that was a good cleanup for Ragnarok. And now he's going to find these mines. Oh, he should, oh, please kill them all. Please kill... Mar Mar Raggy? Raggy? Go her, Fraggy. What do we do? We do. Uh, oh, look at that scan to spot the mute. It's very cute. This is a super scrappy game where every unit pickup, pick off does matter. Uh, Ragnarok lost like four or five banes that he didn't need to waste on the Widow Mines. I do love me some Mutaling Bane. Ragnarok, can he get the mine drag? Oh, no, he can't. It gets retargeted and gets a huge shot. Another line retarget, but a good spread from Ragnarok. Oh, that was fantastic from Maru. Great job on the Muda Mine retarget. Really nice. Ragnarok definitely needs Overlord speed. Honestly, if Ragnarok hadn't had that plus one melee denied and the game had played out the same way... He might be looking at a, a decent position. As it is, we got Mutas trying to reinforce Muta Ling coming in from the backside. Bane Ling's could have gotten some big connections on the Marines, but he wants to come in with the Muta Ling as well. Widowmine gets a huge shot, even though... Oh, that one friendly fire is pretty big. Even though it's a cleanup once again, Ragnarok loses the fourth base. Maru? I mean, this, this game has gotten... It's been scrappy for a while. But now he's going to secure his fourth base. He's got Thors on the way. 
He's about to have plus two weapons for his bio. And once again, another Widowmine being forgotten about. Two Widowmines. Oh, they're both big shots too. Oh, that was 16 lings for free. I say for free. It will cost him the mines, but... Oof. Oof, oof, oof. Ragnarok is getting into his own 2-2 and adding Burrow. But Maru has so much of an advantage. He's killed the fourth base now twice, I think. Maybe three times. Widowmine does get sniped. Good spread from Maru, though. And Maru with a 2-2. Well, soon to be 2-2. It's 2-1 for the moment. Mutaling Bane going to try and go for the attack. Nice spread from Maru. The four really complicates this engagement as well for Ragnarok. He does snipe the medevac, but it's not enough. And Shiji gets called Maru. Takes game number three. Puts himself on match point. All right, here we go. Game number four. Spawning up the top right for Mystery Gaming. It is Ragnarok. In the blue. And his opponent. Spawning down on the bottom left for Onside Gaming. It is Maru. In the red. Maru fighting a great game right there. Constantly coming in with the uh, big army pushes. Did have a great read on when to build SCVs, when to stop building them. Probably went a little bit too, too deep onto creep a couple of times. I think specifically the fight in front of the natural right after he killed the fourth base with the first time. Uh, even when he denied plus one melee, like if he chills out a little bit, lets the creep dissipate, or even just, you know, rotates over back into the middle and clears a little bit more creep there, probably just wins the game. Maybe, you know, three or four minutes earlier. But it is worth noting that Ragnarok was pretty good at, you know, getting mind drags, slowing his opponent's aggression down. It was, it was well done from Ragnarok. But obviously there was a few important things missing. One, Overlord Speed. Two, Ragnarok did a really bad job of clearing up those mines. After each fight, there was like five separate times maybe that the mines didn't all get cleaned up. And I will say... It is annoying when you lose an Overseer. You know what? You know what the secret sauce is? Literally, okay, I've just figured it out. And, and this is like a big revelation for me personally. Just leave an Overseer not hotkeyed in your army. Just behind the fight. Have the Overseers in the fight. And then, yeah, leave an Overseer out of the fight. And then just grab it at the end if you lost your Overseers. That's it. That's all you need to do. Wow. That's such a simple solution. That is actually the simplest solution. Uh, we are going to see... Oh, look at this. Maru. Nice job. Checks the, uh, checks the positioning of the Overlord to see if he's being scouted. It is a third command center behind this. Before factory, in fact. This is a really greedy third command center. If I'm Ragnarok, I'm Ling Bane busting this. Absolutely. 100%. With the add-ons on the outside. Oh, this is... This is the... This is 100% a Ling Bane all-in for me. Uh, but unfortunately for Ragnarok, he took all three drones off gas. So he couldn't just... He wouldn't be at like, you know, 24 gas right now or even 32 gas. He is going to add on a Roach Warren and a second uh, gas geyser though. And honestly, I'm kind of kind of down with him going for a big Roach Ravager Ling all in. Let's see. Let's see what he elects to do. This should be aggression. This is way too early of a Roach Warren to be anything else. Maru, I like his setup. He's added on three more barracks before teching up at all. And that is going to give him good unit production. When you see Ragnarok kind of checking on the tech lab, just poking it a little. But he obviously can't get the pick off there. Maru, it is going to be super crucial for Maru to scout this. Ragnarok even adding on a third gas. That's a lot of gas on his drone count. He's only on 31 drones. So he's going to be looking to morph in a lot of Ravagers. 
Stim should complete. Ragnarok, he would have to all in on it pretty much right now. Ooh, Maru, he's got to be careful. These Marines... Ooh, I don't like the fact that they're, like, allowing the depot to be left open. Ooh, Ragnarok, can he get the wrap around? No. Nice job for Maru. Good job. Gets the Reapers back into the main base. Stim is going to complete. And that's big. But there's no Marauders, no Bunkers. Now, how many Marines do we have? We've got 23 Marines. That's a lot. But the lack of Bunkers makes this really scary. Ragnarok is full send on this. Here comes the Roaches. Big Stim coming on out. Okay. Ragnarok. Going to turn around. The Marines getting segmented off. Oh, that's a big wraparound. The Throws of Bile misses. He could have actually placed that in a really good spot and would have cleaned up a lot of units. This is a really disjointed fight, and it kind of goes bad for both sides, but overall, it's better for Maru because he killed off almost every Roach. Well, he did kill off every Roach. It's just two Ravagers left over. Ooh, stimming forward. I don't know about this. Throws of Biles will get avoided. Ragnarok is going to start droning behind this. Maru wants to run down the Ravagers. That is very clear to me. That's a cute scan. I like that a lot, actually. Making sure there's not a huge ambush waiting at the top of the ramp. And even though there's no concussive shells, he will get the two Ravagers. But he goes way too far. Will lose everything. Hmm. Yeah, this is still a big lead for Maru. Oh. That burned down? Tech Lab burned down. It must have. There's no way Maru shot it himself. Yeah. Uh, regardless, I think this is a good situation for Maru here. Now, Ragnarok did drone up at an appropriate time, and getting the pick off on all those bio units for just two Ravagers. Yeah, that's that's nice for Ragnarok. Uh, Maru, though, I think he's got an, an ideal read on this game. He's going to be getting into medevacs very shortly. They're going to be popping out in probably about 30, 40 seconds. Actually, if he's super on point, yeah, closer to 30 seconds. Uh, now, the big question is, what is Ragnarok's follow-up? Looks like it is going to be Ling Bane behind us. Maru, good job. Waiting for that second 100 gas. Scan comes down, sees the Baneling, uh, Baneling Nest and sees it wiggling. Now, this is kind of funny from Ragnarok. He separated off the Evo Chambers. Uh, but, I mean, Maru seeing the Baneling Nest more uh, wiggling, that's probably enough information for him. Oh, and look at this. Third, uh, fourth Command Center does get built, and it does get scouted pretty much instantly. It is worth noting, by the way, that Ancient Cistern is a very good Zerg map, generally speaking. Generally, a very good Zerg map. There are still, and the reason for that is that there's not a lot of tank positions that threaten the third or fourth bases. But there are still good tank positions on this map. Yeah, Maru's starting to really pull ahead in supply here. Scan comes down. We'll be able to find a creep tumor. The one, <laughs> the one Marine that there was, there was no room in the end. Run, fly, you fool! Drop at the third base. I get grabs a couple drones. Honestly, even getting three drones right now is pretty good for Maru. Maru is going to finish up the 1-1. One, one, and this time, his upgrades are super on point. Armory timing, very good. Oh, Ragnarok leaving the base a little bit exposed. Loses another drone and a queen. And behind this, Drilling Claws. And it is going to be three mines at a time. This is a great way to play this map out as Terran. Probably the best way because of what I mentioned about Siege Tank spots. Oh, does this find all the Creep Tumors? Yes, it does. Mara a little bit far forward on Creep, but it's mostly Marauders in the front. And they will tank the Banelings very effectively. Meanwhile, Overlords. There's a lot of Overlords scattered all over the map from Ragnarok. I do like that a lot. Like, these positions, if there's so no Vikings... <laughs> God damn the D.Va. Uh, if there's no Vikings, really, really nice. Maru spreading, uh, clearing even more creep on this right side. He's just lowering the amount of influence. 
that Ragnarok has on the map. Right now, there's only one active tumor. So if Ragnarok wants more creep spread, he's going to have to send those queens to the front. He only has three. He does not have a lot of queens. Only three queens. Wow. How many did he lose? Just one. And the fact that he got this much creep off of it is really good. But it's obviously really bad for him replenishing creep. I was actually, there was another active tumor. It was right here in the main base. Maru says, no, no, I'm hunting active tumors. I'm going to make you correct steadfast, even though you were wrong. You know, most, most players usually do what they can to make me wrong. Maru being a homie. Ooh, Banelings. Uh, they get a few Widowmines, but a good spread from Maru. Gets the rest of them out of harm's way. And Maru, while he secures his own fourth base, I mean, it's already secured, he denies his opponent's fifth. And even though there's great vision on the outer edges of the map, you can see Ragnarok is super blind through the middle. Oh, man. Maru, as he made me right, he also made me wrong. He did forget his uh, plus two armor. Huge Widowmine connections. Three of the mines do go down, but a fourth one got a ton of damage done. Meanwhile, drones going down to a mine drop in the base. Banelings do connect. Oh, but another mine shot. Oh, nine more drones. Eight more? I don't know. It's a ton of damage. This is looking catastrophic. Oh, it was eight more, and a ninth drone went down trying to take the fifth base. This is looking so good for Maru. He had a bit of a rough start to the series, but he has gained momentum over time. And Ragnarok, he seems to have run out of steam after the first game and a half. Ragnarok is down now 30 army supply. He's down 30 workers. If we flipped the worker count, this game still wouldn't be over. Assuming the army supplies stayed the same. But when the Zerg is down 30 workers, now 20 as he replenishes some. It's not happening. Oh, when a mine drop comes back in again, only gets three more drones. Could have been a lot worse, but Maru has fully dissipated the creep. He is playing so well in this game number four. Really well done by Maru and Ragnarok. Once again, losing this fifth base. Widow Mines. Oh, they do get dragged a little bit. And there's no medevacs here. Can the Hydras win this fight? Maybe. Yeah, but even if they can, does it matter too much? If this army had been swamped in the middle, it would have mattered a lot. If he loses all 40 supply there, yeah, it matters a lot. But Maru gets out of there with the rest of the army. Ragnarok. I mean, even if he had cleared that up, would have still been tough. Uh, what's the medevac count? I honestly wouldn't mind going up to like 10 medevacs. He is adding on a couple more. Realizes there is an energy issue. And that's something that happens when you go heavy marauder a lot of the time. Is because you're stimming those marauders, they're doing 20 damage per stim instead of 10. The longer the fight they fight, the more difficult it is. Still, Maru is in complete control of this game right now. Ragnarok. He's fighting on because this is his tournament life on the line. But... It is going to be really tough for him to do much. Widowmine does get mitigated pretty well by Ragnarok, but Maru is just, he's just cooking. Talking about vision here. I mean, Maru's up to six bases, taking a seventh base on location. And five Liberators at a time. Wow, that is not something I expected to see. Liberators, when you've got so much uh, momentum are really difficult for a Zerg to deal with. I mean, they're, they're difficult for any race to deal with when you've got momentum. Uh, Maru will be able to get out of here with the majority of the Marauders. Them being so chunky and kind of clunky also makes them more difficult to wrap around upon. Ragnarok. He's been desperately trying to hold during all this. He did lose another seven drones. Overseers. Oh, man. They're slow Overseers here. Is there even a hive? There is not a hive. Ra Ragnarok has been defensively all in for quite a while here. Maru is continuing to just try and batter at this uh, victory home. Yeah, there's no no hive. No hive. Lurkers. I mean, these are hiveless upgrade lurkers. 
so the Liberators are going to do very well against him, especially with range. Oh, and we're actually just going to see the Concave of Bio taking him down. Maru rushing through on the top side. He had a read on the game from minute one. And he will take this one down. Very well played by Maru. 3-1 to one victory over Ragnarok. Again, makes it 25-1 and one in series. If you enjoyed that series, make sure to hit that like and subscribe. We'll catch you on the flip side.